Okay, so joining me for week four. It's week four, right? I think it's week four, yeah. Week four of the Friday beer break. My good friend Chris Schreier from TorontoBeerBlog.com. Hi, guys. Fred. Obviously uh, brought to you by the Toronto Festival Beer, July 26th through 28th now. Uh, if you have all heard about Session 99, I've teamed up with Sawdust City Brewing to make Allison Breer. If you follow me on Twitter, Fearless underscore Fred, I already posted the label for it. It's fantastic. Um, now, this is from Sawdust City. This is not my beer, but this is four other beers that they've made. Yeah, so actually, it's a funny old thing. It's the same beer aged four different ways. So they're all barrel-aged beers, and it's the Old Woody Alt, which is a good beer. Okay. And it's been aged in four different barrels. Now, like, th does the type of barrel you use really affect it that much? Oh, yes. Okay. That's what we're about to demonstrate. Well, all right. So. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, and forgive the, the labeling, these literally just came out of the barrel yesterday. And because of that, they're actually not carbonated. They're going to be still. At the festival, they will be carbonated. But when just so you don't go, what? It is still. Well, how, do the car how does the carbon happen? Uh, they carbonated uh, using forced pressure, like head pressure. They put it into a vessel like a keg or a uh, fermenter, mm. and they, they pressurize it. You know, okay. It's how you ferment beer generally. Science. <laughs> it's like science class. Although, we do get a little pop there. Uh, they might have a little carbonation left in them. That one, so, not so much. Yeah, these two. And, and, and Aaron did a really good job filling. We go from low to mid to mid to high. Anyway. This guy right here, they, they're calling it a creek. So this is cherries. It was aged on cherries in a blueberry wine now, Kay, barrel. Now, what does that mean when you age it on fruit rather than like, if you've got a fruit beer. Yeah. So is that different yep. than aging it on? Yeah. So Why? aged on means that when you're aging it, in this case in a barrel, they've put actual whole fruit into the barrel. And so it's picking up the flavor there. Other fruit beers, the, the fruit might go into the into the boil. It might even go into the mash sometimes. Um, generally, you get fruit beers where it's aged on something. That's okay. That's how you do it. All right. Actually, Aaron, who bottled these for me and I, and my friend Mark from Left Field, made a beer a little while back uh, that was aged on mangoes and it had Earl Grey tea in it. We're going to be drinking that one uh, next week, I think. Well, this all right. is the same thing, uh, same setup, cherries, but it was a different blueberry wine barrel. So, but you, you will notice a, a taste difference, I promise. I'm gonna marker them like this so I don't get confused. This one is in a Highland Scotch whiskey barrel. Now, uh, Innocent Gun does that. They age their beer in a whiskey barrel. Yep. Now, they also do one in a rum cask. Yeah, they do a lot of um, sort of seasonal or sort of one-off <laughs> versions. Rum casks, brandy, I think they've done. Now, when you're aging it in like a wine barrel versus a rum cask, what differences does it make? Just taste. Yeah, just in parts so, of the you, taste. Because you pick up a little bit of the former alcohol that was in there. Exactly. All and, right, so. We're going to get this. Now, these are all aged differently, but what is the type of beer that it is? So, it's an alt beer, which is from Dusseldorf, I believe is the style. It's like the, the bigger Kolsch beer. It's uh, a brown beer, as you can see. Should be malty, have a bit of a snappy kind of hop to it. They're very distinctive beers, and they are actually, uh, they're ales that are aged, so they're aged ales, like a lager ale is what they call it. So start with the far right. This is Old Woody Alt in blueberry wine barrels. Old Woody Alt. On cherries. Old Woody Alt. So you can smell blueberry right away. Blueberry wine. Blueberry wine and cherry right off the top. fruit. Which would be blueberry and cherry. That is so good. Mm -hmm. I feel like old timey drinking this. Yeah, I mean there's a ton of oak to it for sure. That yeah. was a very fresh tasting barrel. I get a lot of wood to it. And then, the oak taste really is like the aftertaste. You taste the yeah. fruit right off the top. Yeah, though. big tart up front. Not so much of the blueberry, a lot of the cherry, which you should expect, but then a lot of the oak. Now, interestingly, try this one, the, the next one over, because again, same setup. Cherries, blueberry wine barrel, or Woody Alt, but a different barrel. There's like a huge difference. It's way sharper. Yeah, way tarter. Less oak on the finish, I find. Weird, eh? Why is it everything that Sawdust City does is like just it's out so there? So damn cool. They they're the coolest. Like they're the coolest brewery. And when I got they're teamed up cool. with them for Session Ninety Nine, I felt really good. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I was like, I want Bose or Sawdust City, and Tom Green is with Bose. Tom, yeah, Tom Green beat you out on yeah, Bose, unfortunately. Yeah, which is understandable. Yeah, I'd give it to Tom Green too. All right, so, <laughs> well, I'm with Sawdust. I won. This is the uh, Scotch whiskey Highland whiskey barrels. Oh, that's way more demure. Yeah. Incidentally, I get a lot more of the beer. Okay. Yeah, you do. Now, what's interesting is I know for a fact these are the same barrels that Radical Road used to do their Candyman Scotch Ale, which was a barrel-aged Scotch Ale. And you can reuse barrels a lot. 
the first use, you get a bit more pop than the second and subsequent ones. You know, the so how is used are those barrels? First, time, uh, this is the second run on them. As, aside from whiskey, they had yeah. whiskey in them as well. So, and then we left the bourbon one for last because bourbon is a tendency to be pretty hot. And uh, I asked uh, Spinny what type it was, and I can't remember what he answered. It's Kentucky bourbon, anyway. Oh yeah, Completely that is different again, right? That is way punchier. Like that tastes like there's hard liquor in it. Is what it tastes like. It tastes like to I got some a extent there charge. is because ideally the barrel arrives still wet, which means it still has you know forty, maybe fifty, sixty per percent. Not the biggest fan of that actually. You don't prefer the bourbon? That's fine. No. Everyone has their own taste. But I really dig the fruit ones. Oh, very, very nice good. And maybe it's just because it's summer, or at least we're hoping it becomes summer. That's right. Yeah. They. Uh, they're they're really wild. It's cool because you wouldn't normally think of doing an alt on fruit, but they did and it totally worked and I think it's cool. So these are going to be at a booth at Toronto Festival of Beer that's focusing on barrel aging. Um, they've made them specifically so for So is this event. what cask ale is? Is no. it aged? Okay, well, we don't need to get into that. That would be a whole other segment. So why is, what's the, is barreling like the new thing? Yeah, barrel aging is pretty big. It kind of broke through with Goose Island in the States, in Chicago. They did a breakfast stout. Um, I actually like a had a lot of Goose Island when I was in Chicago. And then they barrel aged it, and people went nuts. They put it in bourbon barrels, and people were like, this is amazing. Why haven't we thought of this? Of course, historically, beer could have conceivably been in any barrel, because barrels were commodities, right? They weren't throwaway. So beer would be put into different barrels anyway. But in sort of modern craft brewer, and Goose Island kind of broke it through. And now, yeah, everybody and their brother has a barrel. You go to like Amsterdam, uh, their brew pub that's opening up, they're, they have something like, they're gonna have something like 60 barrels there. They have more at the brewery in Lee's side. Uh, like I say, Radical Road brought in, I think, an ungodly amount of Highland whiskey barrels to do uh, Candy Man. Great Lakes has a big barrel aging program. Everybody's barrel aging these days. All right, so explain a little bit about the style of beer before it gets to the aging process in the barrels. What about the beer itself? Sure, so it's Old Woody Alt, which is like a product that they regularly make. It's an alt beer in style, which is- Alt beer in. Alt beer. Not alt beers in like alt rock, but alt beer. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. it's not short for alternative. It's All right, that's just what it's alt called. Beer. Right, alt beer. Um, comes from uh, Germany. There's a couple of brew pubs that have been making alt beer the same way for like hundreds of years. It's quite a storied past, but there are these ales, uh, sort of brown in color that are then aged and lagered would be the word, but they're not lagers. Their ales, very confusing. Um, the style is very malt forward. It should have some noble. Remember, we were talking about German noble hops. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Right there. Going to be in there. You should have some nice kind of tannic dryness, maybe a little herbal. So, with what you've got here with this specific style, could you, in theory, take any style of beer and then just start aging it in barrels to create something different? Like, you could take like a gruit and age it in blueberry wine barrels on cherries and it would change it dramatically. Yeah, absolutely. So there are some beers that benefit more than others from the aging process. For instance, a North American light lager is probably not going to be the best investment in three months in a barrel because it's just going to taste like the barrel. On the other hand, a stout, like a, an Strong stout, with a lot of flavor on its own. Yeah, and a bourbon barrel or a whiskey barrel, it's going to add a lot of punch. It's going to add a lot of vanilla and oak, which is pretty cool. So. Allison Breer, my beer, we're aging it on raspberries. Yeah. It's a saison. How do you think that's going to turn out? Do you think that's a good, a good sign? Yeah, absolutely. Saisons with raspberry, great combination. Saisons should be tart, very dry, and the raspberry is going to add a little bit of sort of natural tartness from the. the is, this, is this like a style that's done a lot? Am I? Saison's huge in the States. Saison's a Belgian style, but it's been sort of captured by the US craft brewing scene. And there are way more Saisons produced in the United States than in Belgium now. Canada's jumping in now, too. Uh, there's a couple of really good Saisons you can get uh, in Canada, but it's not as done here. You're, you're, you're ahead of the curve, I guess you could say here. All right, good. As long as we're ahead of the curve. Sawdust City, all these beers going to be available at the Toronto Festival of Beer, July 26th to 28th. If you haven't picked up some Sawdust City at the LCBO, they're at the beer store now or just at the LCBO? Just at the LCBO. They've got the Lone Pine IPA yeah. and maybe the Old Woody, I think. But there are bars around the city, so you can get them on draft at a lot of places. Sam's an artist. Absolutely.